morning folks and welcome to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today on the 15th of January 2018 and today marks the 30th anniversary of the destruction of two of Wigan's most famous landmarks. I am of course talking about Westwood Power Station cooling towers which were felled on the 15th of January 1989. Now for a generation of people he was born after 1989. You won't remember these things dominating the Wigan skyline. So for those of you who've never seen what they look like, I'll put a quick photograph in now. Now, as I'm sure you'll agree, it was rather impressive, wasn't there? They reached 315 feet into the air, and they could be seen from miles around. And if you was from outside of Wigan, or indeed you lived in Wigan and you'd travelled outside of Wigan, you always knew you was on your way home when you saw the power station cooling towers and the twin chimneys from the power station smoking away there in the distance. Now, it generated power, Westwood Power Station, right up until about 1986, and it was winding down by that point. It should have been decommissioned long before that. It was only built as a temporary power station. How you build a temporary power station, I don't know, but the Central Electricity Generating Board, who used to operate it, had built it as a temporary power station. And it was in use long after its last span. It was coal-fired, especially with the local coal fields not being far away. It was served by the railway, and it did have some coal travelled by the canal. But by the 1980s, like I said, it had been decommissioned. Wigan Council had got hold of the uh, land and they brought in Ogdens to demolish it and level the site. So, on the 15th of January, all Wiganers from this area, Lawrence and Poolstock, we all went as close as we could get to them, as close as we was allowed, that is, to watch the destruction. So I'm going to take a walk around the site now and uh, we'll see what's left. Now this concrete base here, that's in front of you, it's all that remains of cooling tower number one. Those trees in front of you there would have been the centre of the cooling tower. And how a cooling tower would work is it would pump water from the power station down to these towers towards the centre there where you're looking and it would shoot up into the air and then fall off wooden rafters down to the base and then be pumped back and it would cool it. The hot water obviously evaporating as steam up into the air. Now, the problem with these cooling towers that they had was that uh, they were full of asbestos, I believe, at the time. So that pushed back the destruction into 1989. They should have gone at the late end of 1988. But they had to push it back and get rid of all the asbestos. And the scary thing is, Hot Potters, as a kid, I'd been in the cooling towers playing in them. There used to be a little door and some step ladders up the side. And you could actually get in and walk round the centre of them. And we'd been playing in them for years, not knowing. And apparently, my father and many incers had sort of crept in here. And they'd uh, swam in the waters as they were falling below. So it's no bloody wonder we've all got uh, health problems now. Those of us of a certain generation. But we'll take a closer look at this base because, as I said, this is the only one that remains. Cooling tower number two is buried under rubble because all the rubble from the power station and from other building projects covered it they brought it down here and dumped it but this one remains okay folks I'm now on the edge of the cooling tower base where the pump house would have been it would have been through those trees there this little bit of concrete here with the, the graffiti on it that was part of those steps that I was telling you about that led up into the inside of the cooling tower. It was sort of just above the legs, the door, and then, like I said, you could walk around the inside of it. I've walked around this, but high up, when it was a cooling tower. Shouldn't have done right, but uh, there you go. It was amazing back in the 80s. I mean, when they abandoned this power station, these cooling towers... Nobody ever bothered, you could just come round and do what you wanted basically. Today it'd all be fenced off and signs up and all kinds of rubbish, wouldn't there? But uh, nobody bothered. Amazing really when you come to think. Now this green here that you can see in the concrete leading up to those trees, that would have contained the pipe that would have uh, shot the water up into the air. 
No, the pipe would have been encased in concrete. It was like a big concrete square. You could walk along the top of it and get to the centre of the cooling tower, which is roughly the path I'm now following here. And like I said, just in these trees here, that's where the centre would have been. And there's all these stories, if you fell in these pipes, you know, if you went down it, you could walk all the way along and get inside power station. I don't know anybody who ever tried, you wouldn't have got halfway down, to be honest. But like I said, here would have been the centre of the cooling tower. It's amazing to think that trees have grown on concrete. Because it must be a thick base this to hold, you know, 315 foot of concrete. But yeah, we're now in the centre of what would have been cooling tower number one. And had I been here 30 years ago, I wouldn't be here now. Not with the bloody blast, which I'll show you in a bit, I'll show you them being felled, because that's what you all want to watch, isn't it? Just uh, make our way through the other side. You can actually see some of the square holes in the concrete, which would have held those water rafters, you know, for the, uh, the water to fall down and be cooled down. There we go. These little squares here. There's another one. Those would have all held concrete posts holding up wooden rafters. And that was all the the rubble that they had to get rid of. They had to bag it up. There was bags with asbestos on and you know you wasn't allowed near them really. That's another one, see. I mean it's amazing to see that in 30 years nature has almost reclaimed this site. You know I'm not I can't do it justice here with this camera. But the size of this base is just amazing from one end to the other. That's where I was stood just over there. They were huge of these. They were colossal giants. There was a campaign, I believe, to uh, try and save them. I don't know why people wanted to save them. You know, what can you do with them? You know, you've got some daft who had ideas of, oh, you could turn them into flats and things like that. You know. Nah. Silly ideas, really. There's even stories of trying to want to turn it into a nuclear power station. I wouldn't want that on my doorstep. Local Chernobyl. No, thank you. Someone even come up with the silly idea of turning it into a prison. You know. Like I said, silly ideas. None of these plans was official. There was all Lotl's ideas, you know. Talking at end at street type of thing with neighbours, what they could do with them. In the end, really, they did the best thing with them. They demolished them. Although I must admit, when I was watching them be destroyed, part of me, there was a, a little bit of sadness because you knew something that had been there for so long, something so familiar, was gone forever. Right, folks, well, that was a quick little look around the base of cooling tower number one. That's all that remains 30 years after its destruction. I'm now going to show you the exciting part, which is this particular cooling tower being demolished in 1989. And then we're going to make our way around to where this particular clip was filmed from. And then from there, I'm going to make my way over to where I stood 30 years ago on this very day and watching the destruction of Westwood Power Station cooling towers. So without further ado, here's the end of cooling tower number one. Okay folks, we're now roughly in the area where that bit of footage that you've just watched was taken 30 years ago. I'm now going to try and do a then and now match for you, although as you can see, there's some buildings been built in the 30 years since the cooling towers were demolished. But I'll get as close as I can and we'll see if we can get a then and now match for you. Okay, so this is as close as I can get 
without actually trespassing. As you can see the electricity parlance just to your left though, along with the little substation that was caught on film in that clip. And cooling tower number one would have been roughly beyond that lamp post that you can just see there in front of you. And this is the rough area where that uh, bit of footage was taken from all those years ago. We'll now make our way to where a young Mr H watched them be demolished from. Right folks, well I'm making my way slowly to where I was stood 30 years ago with my dad when we watched the cooling towers be blown up. My dad had brought me over here and uh, he said we'll have a little walk over. I think they, they blew them up about half ten, something like that in the morning. So we came over at ten and we was amazed to find that the police and uh, other local officials, you know, yellow jacketed people, that was the beginning of it, the early 90s, they cordoned it all off and they wouldn't let you over, you know, so we have to give them a bit of, uh, bit of a story, you know. Yeah, yeah, we're going visiting a relative's grave in Westwood Cemetery. All right, OK, as long as you stick to the public footpath, but don't veer off over there. As soon as we got out of his sight, we shot straight over to where uh, I'll show you in a minute. Now, before we get there, I'm just going to do a very quick then and now shot for you. I'll show you some more archive footage which was made for a TV programme called Luke Northwest with uh, John Mundy way back in the 80s which featured the demolition of these cooling towers and I'll show you a then and now and it's amazing just how quickly Mother Nature takes it back and how things change in 30 years. Let's take a little look. Right folks, well after a little bit of mooching around, I think this is the location where that photograph that I've just shown you with the house with the little yellow window was taken from. My guess is that the cameraman 30 years ago was leaning against that tree, aiming his camera over in that direction where everyone was stood waiting for the cooling towers to be blown up. So I'm going to try and do that now and put my theory to the test. Just make sure I don't slip here. And if I lean against this, there, that's roughly it. Sadly, you can no longer see the house with the yellow window. It's disappeared behind 30 years of tree growth. As of the house is roughly on Westwood Lane, which was to the left. Which is a shame, really, because we would have probably got an exact match had those not been there. But, as you can see there, there's a fence post and there's the remains of the fence line. Now there was a fence post on the bottom of that photograph which I'll show once again just for comparison. So yes, I would say that that is where the, photo the photographer even was stood 30 years ago. The cooling towers would have been through them trees there in the background. He would have had to move because if I remember they had all red flags stuck in this field and nobody could be behind it where I'm now stood. So probably just before it was due to uh, set the charges off, they moved everyone forward. And if I recall, I remember a lump of concrete actually shot into the field though. You know, it's probably still in there somewhere. But it's looking a bit ropey that field as well. 30 years of not being kind to it. It's still used by horses, as you can see, for grazing, though. But there's rubbish and all kinds been dumped in here since, which is a shame. Uh, progress, I believe, but there you go. So what we're going to do now, what Potters, we're going to make our way straight forwards across that field. Hopefully those horses will leave me alone. As you know, I have a bit of a phobia about them after nearly getting bit by one on a previous walk with Mrs H. And uh, we'll take a look of exactly where I was stood 30 years ago to this day. Okay folks, well we're almost there. Now thanks to the wizardry of the internet and people uploading photographs, I found a photograph online of me actually stood there amongst the crowd waiting for the cooling towers to be felled, way back when with my father. I'm only a little blob on it but I recognise the jacket that I had back in 1989 and that's how I know it was me. I was stood at the side of a telegraph pole holding onto an iron railing fence and just waiting for them to uh, blow them up basically. Now the area behind me has changed massively as you'll see from the photograph. 
brambles have sprung up and once again the trees have shot up in 30 years and that metal fence well it's disappeared as have the telegraph poles anyway I'll show you the photograph now and then uh, join me again and I'll talk you through it so this is roughly the same area 30 years later as you can see all that lush green grass has gone it's been replaced with brambles which is slowly encroaching onto this field which is known locally as the cornies or the cornfields now I'm going to make my way down to the road that we were stood on which forms part of Westwood Lane I'll just make my way down this path here which as I said wasn't here 30 years ago you know it was uh, it was field all the way down there and off that way now I've managed to locate the exact spot because although the telegraph poles have disappeared whoever was taking them out I'm assuming British Telecom or a contractor on behalf of British Telecom they've been rather lazy and just cut them down so the stumps are still there and as I was stood right at the side of a telegraph pole I know exactly where I was stood now as you can see these trees that was just little shrubs 30 years ago they've shot up they've shot up so where everyone was stood there near that metal fence which has long since disappeared those iron railings long since in a scrapyard somewhere nobody would have seen anything and I was actually stood right here at Potters roughly where this mound is now today my dad was at the side of me and I don't know if you can just see it there there's the stump to the telegraph pole which proves that I was stood not far from it now we'll take a little look at the field and where the cooling towers would have been like I said had we been stood there you'd have seen nothing would you There's a bit of a gap here in the tree, so we'll make our way down and we'll make our way onto the field where, like I said, the cooling towers were there waiting to be blown up. Now beyond that tree line there, where you can see the horse, that's where they'd have once stood. So from that spot there, you had an excellent view, but not as good as the people over in Poolstock because they actually saw the legs get blown. Down there is where we were stood before when I showed you the little house with the yellow windows which as I say is hidden in those trees there. Right we'll make our way off this field now because like I said those those horses back there they're rather curious obviously someone comes over and feeds them and they probably think it's feeding time when I've popped over there. So join me in a minute and we'll uh, we'll wrap this video up. Right folks, well that's it from me. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little trip down memory lane and uh, revisiting the day when they blew up Westwood Power Station cooling towers. It's amazing to see 30 years later how the landscape has changed. As I said, trees have grown, brambles have sprung up and it's barely recognisable from the lush green fields that it was 30 years ago. Anyway, I'm out of here, but before I go, for those of you who preferred the skyline the way it was, here's one last look at it when the towers were actually up. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.